Everybody knows that Iran wants to destroy Israel and the West. Everybody knows that they want to conquer the world. Everybody knows that they're either on the verge of acquiring nuclear weapons or they have them already. And everybody knows that they must be stopped. But why isn't anyone doing what we all know needs to be done? The answer is one word. Fear. The psychological mechanism at play here is called cognitive dissonance. It's a subconscious denial of something so terrifying that the gravity of the threat is totally denied despite the catastrophic consequences of an action. In Israel, we don't have the luxury of deluding ourselves with rose-colored glasses. For us, allowing ourselves the indulgence of cognitive dissonance would cost us our lives. Millions of them. We've been down that road before and we're not going to do it again. Have you ever considered the implications of a nuclear Iran? A nuclear armed Iran is going to spark an arms race in the Middle East and the greater region. Whenever Iran has developed a new weapon that can be used against Israel, they've shipped it to Hezbollah. Now those missiles give Iran, through Hezbollah, the capability of hitting any target in Israel. Once the Iranian missiles are up and running on launching pads in Lebanon, they can reach not just Israel, they can reach Western targets. The Iranians carried out a test to launch a Scud missile from a barge in the Caspian Sea. Many people believe that uh, this is what the Iranians would like to do with the United States, put a missile in a cargo ship going off of our coast. From 100 miles off our coast, we've never seen it. When Mahmoud Ahmadinejad talks about a world without America not only being desirable, but achievable, he could mean a strategic electromagnetic pulse attack. An EMP weapon, meaning a small nuclear bomb, detonated above the center of the United States would literally take down the entire power grid of this country. In the early 80s, Iraq was well on its way to completing construction of its own nuclear weapons. In 1981, the Israeli Air Force destroyed the Osirak reactor, preventing Iraq from becoming a nuclear power. At the time, the world predictably condemned Israel. The United States did as well. But a mere 10 years later, the US was thanking Israel for saving the world from the perils of a nuclear Iraq. When terrorists hijacked Air France Flight 139 full of Jews and held them hostage in Entebbe, we didn't appeal to the UN or seek diplomatic negotiations. In the most daring and miraculous rescue mission in history, we acted decisively, freeing the hostages and bringing our fellow Jews home. The international community should have learned the futility of appeasement of evil, of attempting to pacify tyrannical dictators. It just gives them the time they need to build their strength and implement their dark and murderous schemes. In Israel, we know this. We simply can't afford to wait for the possibility that the international community will garner up the courage to support us. It'll be too late. Too late for us and too late for the world. As the nation of Israel, we have been assigned the responsibility of being a light unto the nations. And as that light, we not only have the right to defend ourselves, but the obligation to defend the rest of humanity.